So welcome back, everybody, to the Coaching Masters podcast. So everybody, we're going to be talking about something very, very interesting today, something that I feel very passionate about that is called the seven levels of expression. So anyway, the seven levels of expression, what is this all about? Really, the seven levels of expression is all about being mindful of the words in which we use to communicate with ourselves and by extension, other people as well, right? But even though, of course, we use words to communicate with other people, we need to understand the importance and the impact of the communication and the words that we use when talking to ourselves as well, right? So this is very, very, very important. And one way of being able to begin the journey of being mindful is the seven levels of expression, right? So what I want everybody to do by the end of today's session is I want everybody to stop themselves in their tracks when they find themselves about to communicate in a way that keeps them stuck on a lower level of expression. Now, by the end of today's podcast episode and by the end of today's training, you will understand this, right? The seven levels of expression, right? The seven levels of expression. So if you're looking at this now, what you're going to notice, you're going to notice that there's a triangle, right? Right in front of you. There's some sort of like triangle pyramid thing that we can climb up. So what we're going to do is we're going to work our way up the levels of expression and we're going to pay a little bit of attention to the results of what happens internally when we communicate with ourselves within these different levels, right? So as you can see, as I now play around with my new toy, my iPad, we're going to be looking at this lowest level down here, right? Which is have to. When you say to yourself that I have to do something, you're keeping yourself very much trapped, okay? Now I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about that in a moment, but just to announce what the several levels of expression are, it's I have to, I ought to, I need to, I want to, I desire to, I choose to, and I'd love to, okay? So we're going to work our way up the levels, going from the bottom level to the top level, okay? So let's look at the lowest level, right? When you communicate with yourself and you say, I have to do this, I have to go to that place, I have to speak to that person, I have to go to work, I have to see my relatives, I have to go outside. I have to get fresh air. I have to eat cleanly. I have to lose weight. I have to make more money. Have to, have to, have to. This is what we consider a suicidal level of expression, keeping yourself stuck, keeping yourself dead, unmotivated, uninspired for the purpose of other people and other things outside of ourselves. We want to try to completely avoid the have to, because you know what? Technically, and is this really a technicality? Who knows? Or is this just something that more lives on the realm of philosophy? But technically, you don't have to do anything. What do I mean by that? When I say technically, you don't have to do anything. What is it that I mean? Well, when we say I have to lose weight, is that true? Is that true? Is that a fact? Is that an absolute? You have to. Or is there an alternative, right? Is it more that you would like to, that you feel like you must, that you feel like you need to? Now, those still aren't great levels of expression, and we're going to come on to that in a moment. But when we are living on the level of expression, the lowest level of expression, which is have to, we must ask the question, is that true? Is that true? Now, what I would argue is that no, it's not true, right? Let me give you another one, the one that's a little bit stronger. Well, I have to go to work because I have to make money, because I have to eat, right? Okay, now that is one that would be difficult to argue with. Is that true though, right? Or is it that we do not like the idea of the result we would get if we didn't go to work, make money and eat, right? But we fall into that trap. I have to. So we'll let's stick with that example because a lot of people are in that realm, right? A lot of people are in that place at the moment. Well, I have to go to work. I don't want to. I hate it. I don't like it. But I have to go to work because I have to make money because I have to eat. Technically, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to go anywhere. 
you don't have to see anyone. You do those things because the result, the other result, the alternative is not something you desire. The alternative is something you desire less than that current reality, i.e. not having any money. And if you didn't have any money, then what you would have is you would you would be out on the streets, right? You wouldn't be able to pay your mortgage. You wouldn't be able to pay your rent. And, uh, and, and in order to eat, you would have to find food. I don't know where you would find food, but anyway, you can use your imagination. You'd have to go and find food. So that may very well be an alternative reality that you don't want, right? One that you want less than the reality of going to work. So what that does is it moves us up a level. It moves us up a level of expression away from, well, I don't have to go to work, but I really ought to. Because if I don't, I'm not going to make any money and then I'm not going to eat food and life is going to be pretty miserable. Okay. Now, some would argue, and this is, I don't know why we'd argue, this is actually true. Some would argue that if we do move our way up to one higher level of expression, away from have to and towards ought to. Now, what we've done for those people that can see this is we've moved ourselves up one level of expression. There are seven levels of expression. Think about it like seven runs on a ladder or seven levels of a pyramid, right? Seven levels of this triangle thing we're looking at now. We've moved away from the lowest level, the most uninspiring level of I have to do this. And we're running with the example of I have to go to work. I have to go to work. That keeps you stuck. It keeps you dead. Because when we have to do something, we don't have a choice. That's why it's so bad. That's why it's so restrictive. That's why it's utterly suicidal because we do not have a choice i have to do this i have to go there i have to speak to that person and there are no other options it's very 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 likely that is not ever the case and it's not ever really true even though sometimes it very much feels like it's true i can pretty much guarantee that it's not true because as a human being we always have the ability to do absolutely nothing and that be a choice we may not like the result of that choice it may not be desirable in fact it may be a hell of a lot less desirable than the thing that we think we have to do but nevertheless what that does is it opens up our eyes to the fact that we don't actually have to do anything. You could one day make the decision that you are simply not going to go to work. You could one day simply make the decision that you're not going to lose weight. You could one day simply make the decision that you're not going to go and visit your in-laws. All of these things we say, well, I have to do that. I have to go and visit my in-laws. I have to lose weight. I have to go to work. Have to, have to, have to, have to. There's a reason why I'm sticking to this level quite heavily before we move on because it's the killer it's the fucking killer this is why we call it the suicidal level because this is the thing that is keeping us dead when we convince ourselves that we have to do anything right when we don't we don't have to do anything we just don't like the alternative but still it's more empowering to recognize that we don't have to do anything. That's a lot more empowering than feeling like we do. So we're slightly more empowered now, right? We're a little bit more empowered because we're saying to ourselves, I'm no longer going to use the term terminology have to. I'm going to use something different, right? I'm going to use something a little bit more empowering. So what we do is we move up one level. We move up run, one run on the ladder. And we go to ought to. Okay, I fully understand. I don't have to go to work, but I really ought to because I ought to go and make money because I ought to be able to pay the mortgage and I ought to be able to go and get food. Now, why is this still not where we want to live? There is a reason for this. The lower levels of expression, the levels that live down below, the have tos, the ought tos, the need tos, right? These are things that we require external motivation to push us to do we are not inspired to do them in any way we require external motivation in order for us to take action to do the things that we think we have to do that we ought to do and that we need to do right what we want is we want internal inspiration versus external motivation 
external motivation is 100% out of our hands. We do not control it. We do not create it. We can only absorb it, maybe if we're lucky. Internal inspiration is something that we create. That's something that we choose. That's something that is born within us to be inspired to take action, to be inspired to want to create change in our life, to be inspired to go to that place, to speak to that person, to do that thing. Internal inspiration trumps external motivation every single day, every day of the week. The second reason as to why the lower levels of expression, the have-tos, the ought-tos, the need-tos. The second reason as to why they are not desirable is because they are outwardly directed. Outwardly, outwardly, however you want to say it, right? Outwards, outside of you, okay? They're directed outside of yourself. They're outer-directed. And what that means is, is that we require other people circumstances, places, events, things outside of ourselves, in order to direct us and tell us where to go and what to do and what time to show up and what to wear and what to say. When we are living within the realm of I have to go to that place, do that thing, speak to that person, everything is being directed outside of ourselves, i.e. we're being dictated. Okay. The higher levels of expression, which, of course, we're going to come on to in a minute, they are inwardly directed. It's inner direction. Okay, we are the decision makers. We are the ones that make the decision as to where we go, what we do, how we dress, what we say, the way in which we say it, who we speak to, who we don't speak to, and the actions that we take. The higher levels of expression, which I'm going to come on to, when we find ourselves expressing ourselves on the higher levels of expression and using the language that is attributed to the higher levels of expression, we are the ones that are directing our future, our destiny, what it is we end up with, who we end up with, where we end up, what we do. So what we want is we want internal inspiration to drive us forward. And you may ask, well, it's driving us forward, but where are we going? And we want inward direction to tell us where we need to go. We do not want to have to rely on external motivation taking us to a place that we don't want to be that has been dictated to us by somebody else. We are, this is the essence of being a human being. This is the essence of being a functional, happy human being. Of course, there are other people involved in our lives on a daily basis. And we need to look out for them and care for them and have empathy and have kindness. But when it comes to the direction in which we're moving and what is inspiring us to move in that direction, it must come from within. It has to come from within. And the only way that we can really truly get there is via working our way up the seven levels of expression. Okay, so we've moved up a level. We've gone from have to and we've fallen onto the level of ought to. Okay, it's still being motivated and trying to find the motivation externally that will get us to that place of work or will get us into the gym or will get us to the in-laws house or will get us speaking to that person. Right. And it's still being dictated to us by somebody else or something else. So ought to lives on the on the level of survival. Right. The only reason I'm doing this is because I want to survive. Okay, I've made the decision that I do want to live. I do want to eat. I do want central heating. I do want a roof over my head. I do want a family. Okay, I do want to be loved. I do want all of these things that are needed as a human being. So I ought to do the things that will get me that. The difficulty with that is that that is going to crush your fucking soul sooner or later. If we are living our lives in accordance to what we ought to do, simply because we believe that those things are the only way to get us the results that we want, sooner or later, it's going to crush us, okay? Because it's being dictated to us and we require external motivation to get there. So what we then do is we change our language just a little bit more, just slightly, slight change. This is only a small change, right? And we go to the realm of need. I need to. Now, the reason why we feel like we need something is because of 
security. This is a slightly higher level than survival. This is slightly more advanced than survival. This is slightly more evolved than survival. Okay. I ought to do something. I really ought to do it. It's the only way that I'm going to be able to survive. We've now elevated up slightly by saying, I need to do this. I need to go to work. I need to go to my in-law's house. I need to go to the gym and lose weight. I need to speak to that person, go to that place, do that thing. Because what it's giving me in some way or another is a sense of security. It's giving me something that I feel I genuinely need. This is the difference between the ought to and the need to. The ought to is I ought to do it simply because it's the thing that needs to be done right? There's no other way around it. I ought to do it because that's the way it's done. That's how it should be done. And it's being dictated to me that this is something that is going to be needed, right? This is something that has to happen. I need to is now taking a slightly higher elevated sense of independence because what is wrapped up within I need to is the recognition that it's giving you something that you need, right? Not simply because it's being dictated to you by someone else. This is still not great for that, right? When you really feel like you need to do something, there's still an element of outward direction. There's still an element of other people, places and things dictating to you that this is something that needs to happen. There's still an element of requiring external motivation in order to achieve what it is you need. But at least, at least there is the slight recognition that by doing the thing that you think you need to do, you're receiving something that you believe is valuable to you. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. At least by doing the thing that you think you need to do, you are receiving something that you believe is valuable to you. Hence, why you need it. So now you might be saying, well, I need to go to work because I need to make money. And I need to make money because I need to eat. Okay? That's now saying there's an element of that process which I want and I respect and I desire on some way. That thing that I need that that is something that I don't want to be without. And that's why I need to go to that place, speak to that person, do this thing, right? But it's still not great. It's still not great. We still don't want to be living a life feeling like we need to do certain things and we need to go to certain places and we need to speak to certain people and we need to spend our time doing certain things, right? There's always going to be a slight element of that because we are sociable, functioning human beings that have to live within a society of other people. And things aren't always rosy. Things aren't always perfect and great. There will be things that we feel that we need to do. But when we've got something that we feel like we need to do, elevating our expression, elevating our language up just a couple of levels away from this is something I have to do, away from this is something I ought to do, and just slightly towards, well, actually, this is just something I need to do because there's something within that that I want and need, right? Now, mentioning want, let's go to slightly higher level of expression, right? Which is want. I want to. The reason as to why I've got this red X next to this is because even though, even though within the coaching space, it's very, very, very important that we do indeed find out what it is our clients want. And it's very important that for us as individuals, we also become clear as to what it is we want. Want still, if we are going to remain on this level of expression, if we're going to stay on the level of this expression and not advance up any further, let's imagine that this was only the highest level of expression and there were only four levels. Want still lives within the realm of not having what it is you want. That is by the very nature want, okay? So it's important that we and our clients understand what it is we want. However, we do not want to just simply live on the level of want, right? We want to advance past the level of want. Another reason as to why living within the realm of I want this, I want that, I want to speak to that person, I want to go to that place, I want to go to work, I want to make money, I want to eat, 
I want love. I want safety. I want security. Now, as we've already established, one of the main reasons why this is not a good level of expression to stay upon is because if we want it, it means that we haven't yet got it. Also, a second reason as to why this can be a dangerous level of expression to stay upon, and it can be dangerous to only live within the realm of I want, I want, I want, is the social element of that. Okay. Now, you might look at this and think, well, hang on a minute, I want to and I desire to are basically the same, right? How are they any different? The things that separate I want to and I desire to is that I want to a lot of the time is still heavily directed by those outside of yourself. If we're being really, truly very honest with ourselves, often we will want something because of external influence, because somebody else has that. Let me know in the comments, right? How much do you recognize this within yourself? And be completely honest, because I'm a human being as well, and I also experience this. How often do you find yourself wanting something due to some form of external influence, right? Such as a television commercial. A television commercial has shown you something, whether it be a perfume, an aftershave, whether it be um, a type of food, a handbag, some clothes, maybe a Facebook ad, maybe, you know, Instagram ad, maybe any kind of advertisement. You've seen it and you've thought, I want that. Or your friend has something and you think, I want that. You've seen it externally to yourself and you think, yep, yeah, I want that. Okay. Now, want, can, this is why we refer to it as the social level. Because when we want something, this isn't all the time, but a lot of the time when we want something, it has been once again in some way dictated to us by someone or something or some external force outside of ourselves. Now, remember, when it comes to the seven levels of expression, what are we trying to achieve? We are trying to work our way up the levels so that we are the ones directing the movements, the places that we go, the things that we do, the people that we speak to. We want our lives to be inwardly directed. We want to be the decision makers of our lives. And we also want internal inspiration. We want to be inspired by what it is we're doing and who we're speaking to and where we're going, right? So we want to be inspired by what we're doing and we want to be the ones that make the decision as to what it is we're doing. So want, we can never really achieve that high level of inspiration and never really truly have an inwardly directed life if we're living on the realm of want. Want being things that have been introduced to us by other people outside of ourselves and now we've made the decision that we want it. So what we definitely do want to do is we want to then move up one more level the top three levels so let's move up slightly away from i want to and towards i desire to i desire this okay when you have a desire this is self-instructed this is self-driven now, self-esteem, they call this the self-esteem level. And this is very interesting because a lot of people um, confuse self-esteem with self-confidence and self-reliability. A lot of people confuse self-esteem with a lot of different things. But essentially, self-esteem is the opinion in which you have about yourself. If you have a high opinion of yourself, you have a high self-esteem. Now, having a high opinion of yourself is obviously a good thing. Don't let society or anyone else tell you otherwise. You know, is it or is it not a good thing when you have a high opinion of one of your friends, when you respect them, when you love them, when you want to listen to them, when you want to be around them, when you have a high opinion of one of your friends, that is only a good thing. So when you have a high opinion of yourself, that also is only a good thing. Now, when we desire something, it is similar to the realm of want, but we are the ones that have made the decision that that is something that we desire. It's been inwardly directed. It's inwardly inspired, right, which is very, very important. And we are the ones that have made the decision. I desire to go to work. Why do I desire that? I desire that because I desire money. Why do I desire money? I desire money because I desire food. And I desire having a full belly and a warm home. You know what I mean? I desire. This is something I really, 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 truly want. And I want it for me. You know, I don't need to be influenced by anybody else. Nobody else needs to give me this idea. Nobody else needs to motivate me in order to want to achieve this thing. It's coming from you, directly coming from inside of you, your heart, your soul, your being. 
you have made the decision that this is something that you desire, okay? Now, this is a good place to begin when it comes to the seven levels of expression, but we don't want to finish here because desire still lives within the realm somewhat of a lack, meaning we don't have it yet. If I desire to do something, it means that I want to do it, and that is my choice, but I've not yet done it. I've not yet got it. It's not happened yet. So we don't really want to stay on this level. We do want to work our way up to the higher levels of expression. The language that we want to use begins with desire. When there is something that you can truly say that you want, and that has not been inflicted upon you, you don't need any external motivation to achieve it. You can say that there is something that you really, really, truly want, someone that you really want to truly speak to. There's some place that you really want to go. There's something that you really want to do. And that's coming from you, right? That's really purely coming from you. You can use the language, I de- this is what I desire. This is what I desire. And that comes from me. When you're on your journey to achieve those things. But let's work our way up just one more level, right? Just We're going to go up two more levels. Let's go up one more level. So this is now really, truly the language that I want all of you to adopt as of today. I want you to totally move away from saying, I have to, I ought to, I need to. And I don't even really want you to start saying, I want to. I want you to change that to desire. But now, having moved away from all of that language, what I really want you to start saying as of right now, as of today, is I choose to. The level of self-fulfillment. I choose to. This is huge. Never underestimate the power of having choice. The reason why this is so powerful and why all of the other levels in between are like, okay, they're interesting, whatever. Yeah, there's some good lessons there. But this is the one that I really want you to latch on to. I really, truly want you to hold on to this level. I choose to. I choose to. The reason as to why this is so powerful is because those things that you were referring to on the lowest suicidal level of have to, you can still talk about those things. But by changing I have to to I choose to gives you all sorts of new levels of empowerment. Go from I have to go to work because I have to make money, because I have to eat. That's fucking trapped, suicidal, dead. That's so uninspiring that if we live the life in accordance to I have to, we're going to hate ourselves and we're going to hate our life, right? But if we change that, if we recognize, no, 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 I don't fucking have to do anything. I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to speak to anyone. Have tos do not exist in my world. But I tell you what, I do choose to. I choose to go to work. I choose that. That's my choice because I choose to get money and I choose to eat. What's even more empowering, I choose to start that coaching business. I choose to be my own boss. I choose what I wear every day. I choose where I work every day. I choose what I do. Choice beats no choice 100% of the time. Having choice is better than having no choice. And that is a fact every single time. Replace the have to's with I choose to. Replace the ought to's with I choose to. Replace the need to's with I choose to. Replace the want to with I desire to. And then make it a choice that you're going to do everything you possibly can to make it happen. Start making choices. But you know what? It's not even about Start making choices because you have been making choices this entire time. We're always making choices. Start to recognize that you're making choices. That's empowerment. Start to realize and recognize that there is no such thing as I have to, I ought to, I need to. There is only I choose to because nobody has a gun to your head. And you know what? Even if we, someone did have a gun to our heads, you could still choose not to do it. The result might be that you get shot in the head. Still a choice. Still a choice. Right. 
We choose to, even when we feel as though we're being dictated to, we're trapped, there is no fulfillment, there is no inspiration, and we're doing things monotonously because we feel like we have to just slightly change that to recognition that actually I don't have to do anything and I choose to do this. That moves us very high up the levels of expression. But there is one more level. The highest level of expression is that I love to. Now, this one can be a little bit of a stretch for people, especially when finding yourselves in a bit of a restrictive situation and place. We can wrap our heads around understanding that we choose to do what we do, but we can't always get our heads around the idea of loving everything that we do. But hang on a minute. Just let me just bear with me for a moment, because this one is actually very, very important. This one is so important, in fact, that, of course, it does also deserve its very own heart, which I'm going to give it right now, because it is really important. Let's break this down. Loving something, right? I love to visit my in-laws. I love to go to work. I love to lose weight. I love to go to this place. I love to speak to this person. I love to do this thing. We can make the decision that that is our reality, even if at the moment it's not. What do I mean by that? That in itself is a choice. That in itself is a choice. And how do we make that choice? We make the choice through commitment and relentlessly deciding that that is the choice. For instance, you may say to yourself, but I hate going to work. I hate it. Now, if you were to make the decision today that you were indeed going to love it. And why are you able to make that decision? Because you are empowered to do so. You have the right to do so. And no one can fucking tell you otherwise. If you make the decision as of today that you are going to love doing the things that previously up until now disliked and hated, no one can take that away from you. And you know what? If you decide to express yourself on the highest level of expression, be it that you love to go to that place, speak to that person, do that thing that previously you hated. If you make the decision that you are going to express yourself on that level of expression, no one can tell you otherwise. No one can disagree with you. And if you make the decision to express yourself on the highest level of expression and you make the decision that actually, fuck it, today I'm drawing a line in the sand. I choose to do that thing. And you know what? If I choose to do it, I'm going to love it as well. No one can take that away from you. And if you do that, what you will discover through the power of your reticular activating system is you will realize all of the places where you can learn to love that thing or that place or that situation. It's a very, very powerful two-hand combination to move all the way away from, I have to do this thing. I have to. I don't have a choice. I have to. All the way to, actually, I choose to do it. I'm going to choose to do it. I'm also going to choose to love it. Never underestimate the power of a human decision. Making the decision. When there are things in my life that have existed on the realm of have to or even ought to or need to, when those things exist, and they do exist because I'm a human being, right? I'm always faced with things that I feel like I have to do, I need to do, I ought to do. When I'm faced with those things, what I do is I recognize that actually I don't have to do any of them and I choose to do them. And then I take it one step further and I say, well, in that case, if I choose to do this thing, I'm also going to choose to love it. I'm going to make the decision that I love it. That's my decision. Fuck it. No one can take it away from me. If I'm going to do it, right, I'm going to recognize I'm choosing to do it. I'm going to decide that I'm going to love it. Simple as that. I'll tell you where this gets really, really, really very powerful. When we find ourselves in a situation where we do genuinely feel as though we don't have a choice, that is where this gets really, really powerful. Because when we find ourselves in a situation where we don't have a choice, right? That's what it feels like. Technically, we always have a choice. But you know the kind of situations I'm talking about, right? I find myself in those sort of situations all the time. I know you guys do as well. When you find yourself in one of those situations where you genuinely feel as though you don't have a choice, the best thing you can possibly do is look at that one choice that you do have, that one option that you have, and make the decision absolutely love it. 
Why is that powerful? Because what is the fucking point of anything else? What's the point? What's the point of the alternative? If you find yourself in a situation where you truly genuinely believe there aren't any other options, there's only this one option. A first coaching head would be, of course, to explore this as much as possible to try to find as many options as we can naturally. However, if you find yourself in a situation where you do, where you have done that and you do genuinely believe that there are no other options and you are only faced with one option. What is the point of hating the option if it's the only option? Recognize that you have the ability to decide that you're going to love that option because why not? Work your way up the levels of expression. When you find yourself in a situation where you're saying, look, I have to, I ought to, I need to, trapped, 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 restricted, uninspired, being dictated to by everybody else, I want you to endeavor to work your way up the levels and start using the language of these seven levels of expression to remind you of what they are to everybody listening to on the podcast. The lowest level, the most uninspired level, the most disgusting level that we want to avoid at all costs is I have to. And then it goes from I have to, I ought to, I need to, I want to, I desire to, I choose to, and I love to. self actualization is the highest level of I love to self actualization being the ultimate decision maker. If we are going to go to that place that I don't really want to go to, and there isn't another option, I'm going to make the decision. I cannot fucking wait to go to that place. And I love it. If we have to go and speak to that person that I don't really want to speak to, and there's no other options, I'm going to make the decision. I love to go to speak to that person. I love to, can't wait to, and let your reticular activating system do the rest. Because what is the point of the alternative? The only other real time to really recognize, of course, that is something that I don't want, is when you are on the hunt for alternatives. But this little trick here, the highest level of expression, this is reserved for when you have explored other options and you truly feel as though that there aren't any others. That's what this is reserved for. But you choose to do it, you choose to be there, you choose to go to that place and you have made the human decision that you're going to love it. I do that on a daily basis. And I tell you what, it gives me the sense of empowerment that I'm the one making the decisions. It's internally inspired, so I don't require any motivation to get it done. And it's the highest level of expression. Ladies and gentlemen, I love you. I love you. You're powerful. You're strong. You're valid. Make sure that you work your way up the seven levels of expression. Don't live within the realm of have tos and ought tos. Make sure that you make the choice to do what it is you want to do. Go where you want to go. Be internally inspired by that. Direct, dictate your own pathway, your own life. And no matter where you go, no matter where you end up, make the decision that you're going to love it. I love you all. Mwah.